Last year was a huge year for the National Civil Rights Museum and for the history of the civil rights movement. We traveled back to 1968 to look forward. This year, we recognize another significant milestone, 1619, 400 years after the first Africans were enslaved and brought to the shores of Point Comfort, Virginia. The injustice of enslavement has a very long tail, and the remnants still exist and need to be corrected permanently. Many of the remnants of this atrocity play out in the headlines, and I ask, what will the future look like when it appears that bias against African Americans is so rampant that living while black is a challenge at the pool, our college dormitory, at the park, and even in our home while we relax eating ice cream. But I'm reminded that the hate and bias are learned behaviors, as indicated by these beautiful toddlers who know what adults don't seem to. Good friends are precious no matter what package they come in. And just down the road in DeSoto County, the murder of an unarmed resident by sheriff's deputies in his home has seemingly been justified because he was not a legal resident and his civil rights are not protected under the Constitution, or so they say. Shouldn't human rights take precedence over immigration status? These are the remnants of the nation's original sin. Over a weekend this past August, 31 lives were taken in two mass shootings. Why? because of hate and easy access to automatic weapons. We asked museum guests to tell us their feelings around these stolen lives. The words of our fellow humans resonate, like this comment from a visitor from Alabama. Praying for our country, that we learn to love one another despite our differences and skin color. We all bleed the same. These young people and these simple acts of kindness give the hope that Dr. King's legacy will one day be realized. I'm hoping for peace over war, justice over injustice, educational equity for all children, regardless of zip code, fair housing and equitable community development instead of the displacement that comes with gentrification. With me. And jobs that allow people to move out of poverty and become a part of the economic largesse that is this country. Yes, I'm encouraged by young people I meet that want to make their communities, their spaces and places the best they can be. 